Howdy, welcome. Every 5,000 subscribers, we do a special video and we just hit 25,000. Hello. So here we are. It's a Q&A. Y'all cued all A. Are we all here? <laughs> Let's proceed. But first, look at my dog. We're gonna start with Instagram because those are usually my favorite and I think you should have dessert first. If you hadn't become an author, what other things would you have liked to do? When I was a kid, I thought that I was going to professionally ride a bike up and down the highway, picking up roadkill to bury and injured animals to nurse back to health. And I'm not quite sure who is gonna pay me in this scenario, but it is still the fallback plan. Should you submit your work to contests slash anthologies even if you have solo workout? Yes, if you want to. Stuff like that is a good opportunity to get new readers, maybe a little bit of money, something to put on your resume, and you usually will make some friends and connections in the industry, which is always helpful. I am always pro getting involved in stuff and collaborating. Not for me personally, but for y'all. Do as I say, not as I do. I have an idea for a novel, but I'm having trouble making it into a novel. Any advice? Write a super duper pooper scooper of a first draft. Just muscle through it. And then you can go back and fix it. Most of the time, I think people are just scared of writing the book because they're scared it'll be really bad. And it probably will be. No one has to know that you did it. There are no repercussions. So just like write it and see what happens. What is the best number? 26. Is it possible as a patron to send you scenes and get you to correct them without it being for a video? I used to do patron critiques as one of the reward tiers, but it was just a whole bunch to manage, so I stopped doing it. Sorry. When you realized you were dope, did you faint? Thank you, Sherman. I actually used to faint all the time. I never figured out why. How are the mountains treating you? Do you miss the swamp? I do miss the swamp, but the mountains use my tax money for things like infrastructure and public well-being instead of giving it to oil executives. So you win some, you lose some. Who is your hottest friend and why is it me? You know why it's you. Writing project you're most excited about right now. I'm actually really vibing with the poetry collection. I won't say it's any good because I don't know how to judge the quality of poetry and I don't think anyone else does either. It's just an insane little format that I don't think anyone understands. But that just means I can work on being really confident that it's good and other people will have to believe me. Who would win in a fight between your favorite Marvel superhero, hero? Who would win in a fight between your favorite Marvel superhero and favorite DC superhero? Please hold, okay. I'm gonna take Jessica Jones for Marvel and Harley Quinn, obviously. Um, I think Jessica Jones would win, but Harley would get her next time and then they'd have an enemies to lovers arc and they'd adopt an African gray parrot from their local bird sanctuary and live happily ever after. Do you get overly critical of your work and or writer's block? How do you deal with it? I've taken pretty big breaks from projects that I've gotten burnt out on and I probably do get overly critical of stuff, but you kind of just have to post or publish it anyway. I don't know. You got to manually shut it off. I think that's for everyone, probably forever. Have you been in NYC? Yes. Favorite swamp cliche. Do you mean like a phrase or an element? Because my favorite Cliche swamp element is probably an alligator snoot sticking out the water because it's a classic and also they're normally like kind of standing up underneath it, which is funny to think about. My favorite cliche swamp phrase is probably just threatening children with a rougarou. Bangers never die. How old were you when you made your first duck friend? My earliest memory of a duck is when I was like four, I was feeding them at a pond with my nanny, which is a godmother. Don't make fun of me for being rich. Think of something else. But I don't remember bonding with any of those ducks because a nutri rat showed up and I was quite enamored with her. Then when I was eight or nine, we hatched duck eggs and I made sure that I was like right there so that they would think I was their mother. What should I make my art business? Stickers, prints, downloadable prints. <laughs> Something that's like cheap and easily copyable so you do the work once and then you can sell it for forever. Then sell the originals but list them for like thousands of dollars and just wait. Eventually they will sell because there's always some guy on the internet, you know what I mean? And I think we should all be embracing the opportunity that some guy on the internet provides. Okay, on to YouTube. Starting off strong with 100 questions. Thank you, Opal. What genres do you write? My genres are short stories, poems, fantasy, contemporary, romance, erotica. I won't say I'm limited to those. I will try like anything and I have. I've written shorts and novellas in like historical fiction, dystopian, mystery, horror, sci-fi. Haven't released most of them. I like sad, gross stuff the best. 
what is that genre? The like romanticizing roadkill genre. Do you have fun projects in the works? Uh, my current projects are the dystopian short story collection, a poetry collection, and the poetry collection is like loosely swamp themed. Like the working title is Bayou Shadows. That's not going to be the title, but you get it. I have that high fantasy duology, a romance series with like a light magic system and erotica. And they're all cooking at once, slowly. They're on like a light simmer. There are actually three erotic novels on the stove as we speak. Self or trad, self-publish. I have a lot of thoughts on that, but I don't want to say them all. Favorite story structure. I don't think I have a favorite story structure. I can't say that I've ever sat to consider it, but I am sitting to consider it now. Give me a moment. I don't have a favorite story structure. Plotter or pantser? Planter. I bounce back and forth. So for shorter pieces, I usually like to just shit it out and see what happens. Because if I outline a short story, it never ends up working. I don't know why. But if it's something longer, like a fantasy duology, I'll usually outline it on the third draft. Authors that inspire you the most. My inspirational authors list would probably be pretty basic. Um, Jane Austen, the OG, obviously. Daphne du Maurier. I, I wouldn't say that like my writing in any way resembles theirs, but when I'm reading one of their books, I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna go write a book. Ever written, dabbled with the fantasy genre? Yes, I wrote that fantasy duology. I had a lot of fun with it and I really like the world, but it's like, it's in a very sorry state. It'll be a while before anyone can see it. What do you think of how literature is ranked in the public eye versus in literary spaces? In college, I felt strongly I was being pushed to write according to a particular standard, high literature. Genres like romance aren't literary enough to be given the time of day. So yeah, a thing that you might notice about college writing instructors is that most of them have PhDs and also no books. If they have books, they are often, excuse me, quite boring and don't tend to sell well. And if they do sell well, those people typically stop teaching writing in school. My personal theory is that the push for literary in academic spaces has a lot to do with funneling students further into academia, be it the next degree or becoming a professor themselves. But the main reason is probably elitism, surprise. I think creative writing graduates kind of have to recover from their education before they can be good writers, which isn't to say that the degree is fully useless. Like I got a lot out of the writing workshops that I did in college, I did not major in creative writing, but I think you have to be really careful about drinking the Kool-Aid. They'll get you. They want you to be trapped in there with them. No offense to my writing teachers, y'all are doing a great job, just like in general. It's just the culture. That's just my opinion. Any advice on writing sensitive topics such as mental health issues within fantasy settings, how to merge metaphorical demons with physical demons the protagonist has to fight? If you're merging metaphorical demons with some kind of physical monster, I would say don't try to make the connection too hard on the page. I think pushing an allegory is kind of one of the most tedious things that a book can do. But as the writer, if you kind of have those themes or metaphors in the back of your mind while you write, it can give depth to the story. But if you try to make sure that all of your readers understand that connection, it's going to be too blatant and worse. What's your favorite part about your job as a writer slash content creator? I like every day being different. I have roughly six jobs and they're all some form of creativity. So I can basically just be making something every day in whatever format I feel like. So if I'm not really wanting to do one thing one day, I'll just do something else. Or I can sit in my garden all afternoon because when your job is being creative, time away from work is also productivity because your brain needs time to create and problem solve. And it can't always do that under pressure. Like imagine someone telling you to write a poem and they put the paper in front of you and then they stare at you while you do it. I think that's how brains are. Like you gotta look away so they're not nervous. Do you think you need a platform like a YouTube channel to sell a first book? If I don't have a channel, nobody knows who I am. What do you think would be the best kind of marketing? It's gonna depend on your genre, really. There's actually a great blog post about selling memoirs when no one knows who you are. I'll link that in the description. Nonfiction is gonna be easier because you can basically sell your readers on what the book will do for them. Fiction is a little trickier and it's gonna depend on your genre of fiction. An online platform is very, very helpful. It doesn't necessarily have to be a YouTube channel, um, but there are some ways around it. I'll try to drop some resources for you in the description. As a new writer, I was wondering if you could give any advice on how to figure out your pace of writing and keep it consistent. If you mean writing pace, like literally the speed at which you write, that's just building habits and that's gonna depend on how you build habits. 
But if you mean pacing in your writing, that's also kind of hard to give blanket advice about. It's really just reading it back and seeing how it feels, reading it out loud can help with pacing a lot. And then you just edit it from there until it's running how you want it to run. My writing advice, try writing. I have a little downloadable of many essays and one is about like pacing and balance in your writing. So I'll link that in the description as well. Check out the description guys, it's hopping. I've been hesitant about creating a writing blog or meeting other writers to workshop with because I don't want someone stealing the meat of my content. Is that something I shouldn't be worrying about? Okay, this is kind of related to your question, but I don't recommend posting very much on a writing blog unless that's your final form. Like if you're writing flash fiction for your blog, that's fine. Maybe you can post a chapter preview of a book, but if you're planning to publish, particularly if you're planning to traditionally publish, I would not post any of it at all anywhere because that can count as a previous publication and a lot of places will not accept it. But for writing workshops, hi Saya. I wouldn't be worried about writing workshops because it's usually your friends. Like I don't know the exact situation, but it's typically people that you know and trust, hopefully, and you're giving them like excerpts, not the entire book. And if you're in the workshop phase, it's not ready to be published yet. So them stealing it would be like a pretty big job with potentially no reward. So I wouldn't worry about writing partners stealing my stuff, but everyone has different comfort levels about it. I pulled 20 or 30 random people from my audience to like beta read stuff for me and I've never had a problem, but everyone here is cool. So all 25,000 of you, I trust you with my life. What are your thoughts on being a book author and book reviewer as in having a channel to review books in the same genre as you write? Is this considered a faux pas? I know a lot of people are very, very strongly against this and I can see the logic there. If writers make book reviews a part of their platform, you are in some way positioning yourself as an expert. If you critique something particular about another author's book on a public format and then you do that thing poorly in your own book, people will probably let you know, but I also know authors who do do book reviews and they do give writing advice and they don't apply the things they say to their own writing. And you, if you look in their comments or their reviews, you can see people having a problem with it, but that doesn't make them make less money. You know what I mean? If the way that you build an audience is through book reviews, you're gonna have an audience and having an audience is better than not having anything. I wouldn't say that reviews are the optimal way to do it, but another thing to consider is that a lot of people take their favorite books very seriously and some readers like to leave revenge reviews, which is where they have a personal problem with you or your content or someone you're associated with or something you said once or someone you retweeted four years ago, they're gonna leave you a bad rating on your book. So I could see it being a bad idea because the internet sucks, but here's the thing, no matter what you do in life, online or off, someone's gonna suck about it. Like the very nature of people who spend their time giving creators and artists grief is that they don't have anything else to think about. There's nothing that you can do to make them any cooler and we cannot force them to get a hobby. So make whatever you would like to make because some people are gonna hate it and you, no matter what. It's cool out here. Don't make content. How do you look at the monetizable hobby that doesn't feel like a hobby statement? Is it true for you or people you know in your field of work, like the art is done for art thing? Have you started out writing as a hobby and turned into a job or the initial intent was to get stonks? First of all, breathtaking verbiage. I do, and that's, that's art. Don't go for readability. Go for being captivating. Okay, so I think anyone getting into writing for the money is diluted. <laughs> but on the other hand, I did start writing under pen names in more lucrative genres for the money. Yes, monetizing a hobby does make it less fun. And yes, artists should be paid. There are people who get angry that books, for example, cost money because they don't think art should cost money. We should be doing it because we want to. <laughs> but I only ever see them angry at indie writers. No one's tweeting Barnes and Noble. The truth of the matter is that a great portion of our population did suffer from lead poisoning. Any tips for people who want to get back into writing when they used to more regularly? I'm reading a book right now and it has an exercise where you just like brain dump three pages every morning. It just kind of revs you up no matter what you write in the pages. So you might try that. Um, I also wouldn't try to assign yourself any kind of genre or format or word count. Just start writing and see what it turns into. Write what's fun for you, be that a novel or poetry or fan fiction, who cares? Any advice on finishing your first draft ever? I can't seem to get past 
10,000 words on my drafts. I have so many ideas, I don't feel like I can give justice to any of them. I'm so sorry to say this, but have you tried outlining? An outline is just like a mini version of your book. And then you can look at it and see it all at once and determine whether or not it's viable before you spend 10,000 words on it. Do you ever plan on writing nonfiction? I do write nonfiction very regularly. It's just short. Um, I write blog posts and educational content all the time. I have considered longer form nonfiction, but I don't feel like I have enough content yet. So I either need to get more experience and data and anecdotes to be able to write a book about self-publishing, or I need to do more crimes for a memoir. What's the message you want to pass on through your writing? Be weird and be cool to people who are weird and respect roadkill. How can I advertise my book if I don't have social media? I currently have a podcast I'm about to start, but I'm not sure of what to do if it doesn't take off. It is free to make social media accounts, so you could do that. But if you don't want to, collect emails and hit that newsletter beat. And you can guest on other people's podcasts, which does become easier when you have your own because you can do little swapskies. Can you do more Briar Manor? I'll keep asking till you do. Maybe. Okay, Twitter. I don't think we got any questions there. JK. What is an article of clothing you'd like to see make a comeback and why is it cloaks? Um, cloaks are cozy and warm and you can kind of hide in them and they have hoods and they usually have sleeves big enough for you to do the thing. Big fan. Do you think you could kill someone with a big gummy worm if you had to? Absolutely. Those things are like 12 pounds, that's plenty. I remember years ago you posted a video about fixing your sleep schedule. Did you manage to stick to it? If yes, did you have hiccups? If not, how long did you last? I believe you that I made a video like that. Um, I can't tell you what happened in it, but um, I haven't used an alarm clock in years. My tripod is about to fall off the desk. But I haven't used an alarm clock in years. I usually wake up around 7. I've been working on going to sleep earlier because I'm usually between like 11 and midnight and I just don't feel rested. Your girl does not feel rested. Sleepy all the time. If I had to give one tip, it's to keep your electronics out of your room. If you need your phone for an alarm, just buy an alarm clock. But if you need your phone for an alarm, plug it in like right outside your bedroom door or even across the room if you have to. Don't look at screens for an hour before bed. That'll fix most of your problems. All right, um, Curious Cat. Curious Cat is an anonymous Q&A site. If you don't know, I don't think anyone uses it anymore, but I offer it up when I make these videos and it always goes one of two ways. Either every question is insane or disgusting or they're all just the basic run of the mill inquiries and I'm not sure why people want to be anonymous for it. Maybe they're trying to shrink their cyber footprint, which I respect. Do as I say, not as I do. What's good, but not great, warm, but not hot, and ultimately disappointing? A quesarito final answer. Hello, any tips for beginner writers? Read and write a lot. Finish a draft before you show it to anyone. Learn the rules so you can break them later. Writing rules are meant to be broken, in my opinion, um, but if you're breaking them on accident, we can all tell and that's embarrassing. Write what you like to write, so whatever's fun, keep doing that, and experiment. Try out a bunch of different stuff. Will you be continuing the Twilight rewrite? No rush. Yes, and absolutely expect a new installment soon. If you had to get spliced with any animal and take up their physical characteristics, what animal would you pick? Yes, this is a question about what your fursona would be. Well, thank you for calling it a fursona and not a spirit animal. It is about time that people start saying what they mean. Can I pick Yoshi or the little frog from Star Fox? It's got to be an N64 character for sure. You mentioned extra videos on Patreon. Are those like vlogs, writing advice, more of your channel or what? All manner of things. Let me go look at the last five patron exclusive videos. Take a look, see. Okay, we've got how to keep a book process doc. That's just like a tour slash tutorial of keeping track of your writing and publishing process to do it quicker because that's something that I vague about in videos a lot. Game tour vlog, one of my moderators kept requesting that one. Designing patron book covers. Some of my patrons sent in their book pitches and I designed covers for them on Canva. They're pretty good. <laughs> Um, I published a preview of my poetry collection, which is not a video. My favorite YouTube channels and a vlog of me putting my Halloween costume together. So it's that type of stuff. I saw in a video you mentioning there being ways to avoid overusing I in first person. Is there a video on this topic or would you be able to describe those ways here? Um, yeah, just don't use the word. 
Sorry, that sounds sarcastic, but I'm so serious. Almost every sentence can be phrased to mean essentially the exact same thing, just without starting it with the word I. I don't think I have a video about it, but I couldn't confidently tell you what my last like three videos were about. Scary, the internet is forever, never make content. But for example, in one of your videos, you mentioned there being ways to avoid overusing I in first person. We did it. Any advice on how to handle book promotion with audiences that speak different language? I'm a translator. Should I make different social accounts, newsletters to avoid clutter and confusion? Yes. I've never handled book promo in multiple languages, but I am a marketing consultant. So I would recommend separate accounts. Absolutely. The content of your promos might also be different because not only is the language different, but but the culture that you're targeting within that language is probably different. So like if you're marketing in different countries, your strategies will probably be pretty unique from each other. But you also might not find a lot of benefit from doing that. So if you have books that are selling way more in one language than the other, which is often the case, you might only promote in the one that's making you the most money because it takes a lot of time and effort to market books. So if you're like doubling, tripling, quadrupling that for every language, it might be more overwhelmed than it's worth. Where quest for the worst at? On Patreon, <laughs> sorry. Any kind of film content invites way too many dudes into my space. So I kind of toss the towel on that one. What's your fave Taylor Swift song today? Thank you so much for understanding that this is a daily question, not an absolute. Back to December. I've been feeling retro. I noticed somebody asked you your grocery list on Curious Cat. So like, what's your grocery list this week? Oh my God, I haven't gotten a grocery list ask in forever. I'll probably just put it on the screen so that people don't have to hear me recite my grocery list. Burr, it's cold in here. There must be some blank in the atmosphere. Clovers. I how dare you ask me that? You come into my home. Who's your favorite patron? Why is it me? If that you is from goulash, it's because you're delightful and like the perfect amount of mean. If it's any other British person, it's because you're incorrect. What movie universe would be the worst to live out your life in? Okay, not to be so 2013. Let me counteract this by saying that I like Nickelback. Um, but probably any Michael Bay film. They're so loud. I don't do well with noise. I'm living my worst life in this universe if there's a Michael Bay film playing with an earshot. Uh -huh.